Hey, you're back with the Penny Stupid Podcast. Uh, I'm Steve Rode, and over there, it's Damon Day. Hello, Damon. What's up, Steve? Hey, we're back today. We're going to be talking about a couple of things. Uh, one is a uh, somewhat, I don't know, popular, unpopular uh, video that I posted about fake driver accounts. And it's interesting, the reaction was not what I thought it would be. And it seems like, um, based on the likes and dislikes for the video, it seems like people were disliking the fact that there are fake driver accounts, which uh, is just a matter of reality, isn't it? Yeah, they they exist. I mean, that article that you read and you mentioned in your last video basically took you through exactly how this lady immigrated to the country and, you know, how she went through the process. And, and it wasn't what I, when I read the article, it wasn't this big grand master plan that she had. It was just kind of, it just kind of started out of necessity. Like if I remember, this is a week, a week ago, I read the article, but if I remember or she came across when she came over, she was on a a visa, like a six month type of visa came in. And the plan was she had a friend that was going to show her how to be a driver, right? right like she right. was going to drive for gig work just to make some extra money. Right. Um, and then that guy like ghosted her, never showed up to pick her up at the airport. So she was just, what, stranded with like $100 in her pocket or something like yeah, that something. and had to, f- in a brand new country and was like, I got to figure something out. And then, yeah. you know, you fast forward, it was a very long article actually. And it ended up being, she was like the queen of fake Uber accounts, <laughs> <laughs> you know, within like a year or two making, well, like I think they said, some months she was making fifteen or twenty grand a month. Yeah, I selling. Think, I think what's really fake Im- accounts. Really interesting about that is one of the things that you and I have heard is people saying, you know, the the scammers are tunneling into the computers at Walmart or Tesla, and you know they're they're faking the computer system, and that's how they're getting the good rides. Well, nothing could actually be further from the truth. Uh, no, nobody is doing that. The low tech way to create a fake driver account in the past has been you know use a fake social security number that the system will recognize or not check and there are easy ways to avoid things like uh, at one point the companies uh, were asking drivers to show up in person and show their identity and, yeah. and, and more comprehensive screening could always be taken and so uh, I find it uh, ironic, or humorous is not the right word. I find it funny that drivers c- keep complaining about illegal immigrants or scammers or whatever are taking my jobs, my gigs, my orders, deliveries. Um, but as you and I have talked about, if there was a magic wand and we could make all the fake accounts uh, disappear, it wouldn't improve earnings over the long haul. Yeah, I mean, what it what it would do is it it would kind of create a a short term euphoria yeah. for drivers, right? Because this is all just supply and demand. You know, gig work is always going to revert back to the mean, right? It's going and it's going to it's going to it's going to chase down to the bottom, right? It's supply and demand. Yeah, and as as more and more drivers come on the platform and are willing to take orders that are that pay less and less, the drivers that are used to making more are going to end up quitting, right? So there's hundreds of thousands, if you know, I don't know the numbers of former drivers out there right now that yeah. are you know have their Lyft account on their phone, have Uber, have DoorDash, and for whatever reason, one or another, have stopped doing these things. Maybe because they've the pay has gone down to half of what they were used to yeah. in 2021 or 2022. Now, if we waved a magic wand and all of these illegal accounts, which there's no dispute that there are a lot right. of illegal accounts, right. we have no idea the number, but I mean, this lady was basically laying out how she did it. She went to jail for what, a year, year and a half. Yeah. And you, you can know, watch our it. video on the Penny Stupid channel all about how easy it is to make fake accounts. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if there's tens of thousands of fake accounts, hundreds of thousands of fake accounts. I know this is just one person making thousands of fake accounts, you know, so who knows how many people are out there, but when there's money to be made, but the reality is this, it, if the companies waved a magic wand and all of a sudden they had a magic mechanism to get rid of all the fake accounts, 
The current drivers right now would love it because all of a sudden mm -hmm. supply and demand equilibrium would be off. Prices would start to surge because there's not enough drivers. Everybody be making money like it's 2021 again, and everybody would be stoked. They'd be like, we won. We did it. But here's what would happen because things don't happen in a vacuum. Right. The buzz, the scuttlebutt, as they say, would get out. Yep. And all these drivers that don't drive anymore, yeah, but still have the apps on their phone, but weren't making enough money, are going to hear, "Oh, Uber's paying the, you know big dollars again." Right. Click. Right. Oh, I'm an Uber driver again. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And within a few months, that you know, all these former drivers or people that live here that are hurting financially, that that hear right because things go in cycles. Oh, yep. it's paying a lot. It's paying a lot. It's paying a lot, and everybody rushes in. And now the pay starts to go down because now there's too many drivers, supply and demand. Right. And it will balance back out. So whether the accounts are illegal or not, it doesn't change the fact that this is a low barrier to entry type skill, job, opportunity, whatever you want to call it. So stop bitching about other people are taking orders from you. That's just the way it is. And as long as there's people willing to take orders for less... Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash are not going to pay more. Why would they? I get very frustrated yeah. by people who blame uh, the lack of uh, orders that are coming or riders to pick up or whatever and blaming all the problems on the, the rideshare industry on all the illegal accounts or illegal aliens or whatever it is because that's that's all just a misdirection. And it gives people yeah. somebody to blame when, in fact, the underlying issue is uh, rates have historically continued to drop year over year. They're going to continue to drop until um, there is not enough drivers and rates will go back up. But here's the flip side of that. Let's say that rates go back up. Hey, these companies are going to have to make up for that in some way. And now they're going to raise service fees to the consumer, which is going to reduce demand again. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, as you have used the word so eloquently, there's an equilibrium that will occur and opportunities are what they are. Yeah. And the equilibrium is not going to be here. It's going to be here. Right. Because what do you really, I mean, the irony of uh, the drivers complaining that people are coming into this country illegally, getting fake accounts and stealing their jobs. Right. It. The irony is it shows how anybody <laughs> can sue your job like there's so how much you know how much should if you want to call them employers which they're not but how much should somebody pay how much should if i'm an employer i'm going to go out into the marketplace and i need a, a, a certain task done yeah and i need to hire somebody that has the skills to do that task if i could pick anybody in the country to do it and adequately get it done am i going to pay two hundred thousand dollars a year no to, for somebody to do that task for me? Or am I going to say, would anybody do it for 20 grand? <laughs> How about 22? I got, right. got 22? Any takers at 22 grand? <laughs> but I mean, that's how it's going to work. So if you're, if you're not happy, don't bitch and moan and complain and demand that Uber, Lyft, DoorDash pay you more. Right. Figure out, figure out ways to use those opportunities to gain an advantage, to try to make more money with those opportunities. At the same time, you're developing your skills, you're getting an education, you're um, getting to the point where you have something more to offer the marketplace, something that the marketplace will pay more for, something that not a hundred million people could do tomorrow, right? Yeah. And one response from uh, drivers or gig workers has been, these companies need to pay more and they have applauded Changes like in Massachusetts, thirty-two fifty an hour, or New York City forcing a, a minimum per hour. But as we've seen in New York City, the way the companies adapted was, uh, if you are idle, they're just going to kick you off the platform. And you know, the, and we're talking about active hours. So if you're not getting jobs, you're not getting thirty-two fifty an hour. I would probably guess that less than one or two percent of all drivers has been consistently active for a full hour and so forcing these companies to pay a minimum wage is going to take away opportunity and it's not going to result in what you're making because one of the things we're going to talk about coming up is 
like the cost of, of doing these gigs, fuel and everything else. So, you know, people are, um, demanding that like in California, fast food workers, what's the minimum? $20 an hour now. But I don't know. Some stupid arbitrary number that yeah. just, you know, don't even get me started down that road. Because <laughs> why the hell do you think it costs $50 to take your family to McDonald's now? Yeah. It can't be the $20 an hour minimum wage. <laughs> that can't be it. And guess well, what? Now you're making 20 bucks an hour. And you know what? You can buy a quarter pounder with cheese meal. You know yeah. what? You could buy at McDonald's when your minimum wage was six damn dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. A quarter pounder with cheese meal. Yeah. It doesn't so- change your situation if you change the number. No, so what what will end up happening is uh, drivers will fight for increased minimum amount to make per hour, and the companies will put more restrictions or limitations on that. We're going to kick you off yeah. the platform sooner. Um, we're going to make you take every shitty order we can. Uh, you're going to pay you're, for it one way or another. Guaranteed rate, right? So that has nothing to do with fake accounts and people coming into the country and getting a moped or. A scooter. It lets people be a victim. Yeah. It gives them something to point to. So I'm <laughs> a victim. True. This that's... is why this is why I'm not making any money any money because it's a victim. It's not because I'm only sitting there doing one app and I used to make more money in that app and now I'm not. So I'm gonna sit here and bitch and moan and complain. Right. You know, because that's that's one type of personality. The other type of personality goes, Huh, I was making a thousand bucks a week doing this. Now, yeah. no matter what I do with this app, I'm making two fifty. There's more competition, whether it's legal, illegal. I need to think outside the box. I right. need to maybe start adding some more apps to my repertoire. Right. right. And maybe start doing some Uber Eats, start doing some DoorDash, start doing some Instacart, maybe start listening to some books on tape or whatever, get an education, maybe get into real estate, do something else. I need to pivot out of right. just being a Walmart Spark driver because Walmart Spark has now gone from, it just came out, it was awesome, and I was killing it to... It's kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like like yesterday uh, was Saturday. I was in my office most of the day. I had my Walmart app on all day. It just That's usually what I'll do. I'll get up. I'll turn on my apps. I'll go to work. And I'm fortunate enough to live near Walmart and Sprouts and a lot of grocery stores. So I can just leave my app on. If I get a banger of an order, I might pause depending on what I've got on my schedule. Yeah. Go grab it, do it, and come back. Right? I'm not out there driving. I do this 10, 15 hours a week max. But I usually average about 40 hours a week. So... Um, I don't know where in the hell I was going with that. Oh, I know where I was going with that point. Yesterday, it was Saturday. I didn't get a single, I didn't see a single decent order come across from Walmart Spark at all. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm sitting here going, now imagine if I was a Walmart Spark driver. Yeah. And this is what I was counting on now, whether it's permanent or temporary, to take care of my family, to pay my rent. And I'm sitting there and Hours go by, nothing. Or here's a seven dollar order, right? You know, and that's going to take you forty five minutes for seven bucks. I I don't know how somebody could could mentally handle that, where you feel like you have no control, like you're a slave, you're a victim of Walmart, and you're and I can see how that anger would. Oh, these illegals are stealing this, they're stealing that, and all this stuff because you used to make more, now you can't feed your family, right? But you're you're. You're wasting your energy, that 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 energy, that anger, that motivation to get online and bitch about people stealing your jobs. That should be channeled into something productive, not complain. There's nothing you as an individual can do to change Walmart. They're going to do whatever Walmart's going to do. Right. So instead of complaining about that, turn on DoorDash, turn on Uber Eats, turn on Instacart, try to get something else going so you're not just dependent on one app. You know, yeah, Uber, and especially Lyft, whatever. Especially now while you can, because I can see a point in the future where uh, an app like uh, Instacart is offering some sort of minimum or or they're going to want you to be dedicated towards that app. And if they see you moving outside of the area, doing something else, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't just kick you off the app. Well, the the problem is. There's two types of people for the most part. You got a W2 mentality and you got the entrepreneurial type mentality. Mm. And the entrepreneurial type mentality loves these gig apps because they're extremely flexible. And I, I can't stress how important that is for a lot of people to literally have a phone and go, you know what? I'm going to go make 25 bucks real quick. I'm yeah, going to come back. I'll be back. Or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, because some people are in a situation where, you know, I, I make 500 bucks a week with these apps, super part time, less than 15 hours a week. 
work it into my daily schedule if I'm out doing errands or whatever, right? Yeah. I, I don't even really have to think about it that much. I'm not working. I'm not out there driving eight hours a day or anything like that. I got way too much other stuff going on. But I can consistently make two grand a month, just an hour here, an hour there, you know, a little extra time in the evenings or on the weekends or whatever. Two thousand dollars a month for most of my clients, that would that would change their situation dramatically. But they're not going to get that with a W two job that just show up whenever you want and when you're done, you leave, right? But all these other W two mentality type drivers, they're wanting to push to change these opportunities into jobs. I mean, that's what right. they're pushing for. When you're talking about guaranteed pay and this, that, and the other thing. And here's what frustrates me. There are millions of those jobs that already exist. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) If that's what you want, go get one, right? right? If you want guaranteed pay, guaranteed hours, whatever it is, you're not going to get the flexibility of gig work with the guarantees of a W-2 job. You know, that doesn't exist. It can't happen. If they're going to guarantee you something, they can't give you that flexibility, Right. right? They have to control you. So leave the gig stuff to the people that need it. You know, that's just selfish. You know, you're not more important than the person that needs the flexibility and is happy to make 20 to 40 bucks an hour whenever they want. Yep. Stop trying to change the few opportunities that people have to, to do that. And you want to be a pizza delivery driver? Go get hired by Domino's if they're still doing it, right? You, can, a- you can get a delivery job. Go work for Amazon or whatever, as a driver and drive a company truck and stop bitching about the miles you're putting on your car because those are decisions you're making. Well, one of the, It's not Amazon's fault you're taking those crappy rides. That's yours. One of my favorite uh, <laughs> stories about, about uh, uh, Uber was in Florida, this corporate executive who every day commuted downtown Miami, back and forth, every day. But what he did was... He turned the Uber app on when he left his house and he picked up somebody that else was going the same direction and got paid for commuting. Yeah. yeah I mean, it didn't Now, ma- could he do that if he had to get hired by Uber and it was a W-2 job and they were going to dictate no. what he had to do when he was on the clock? No. Or if yeah. he was signed up for an hour, you know, he couldn't do yeah. that. So that opportunity for him would be gone because somebody else says, I see Uber. It's it's not a job. It, it, it doesn't pay a living wage, if you want to think of it that way. And that's... That's wrong. That's not fair. They're greedy. They're this. Whatever is true, whether they're greedy or not, doesn't matter. What would you do if Uber didn't exist? Right. If none of these gig apps existed, you wouldn't even have any opportunity to complain about. Right? Because well, here, one last point I want to make yeah. this is important. Drivers are independent couriers. You're not an employee. That's not what this is. You are your own business. It right. might not feel like it's your own business because you had to do absolutely nothing to get into the business. You had to fill out some, you know, forms on an app and you had no investment to it. It's just like, I want to be in business as an independent courier. Do, 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 do. Okay. You're in business. Yeah. Right. Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and Instacart. Think of these people not as employ employers, like, which is how you're thinking of them yeah. if you're bitching about them not paying you enough. Think of them as vendors. I'm an independent courier, right? Right. These companies are going to give me some offers, give me some leads. Say, hey, we've got all of these customers out here. We've got millions and millions of customers. We see now you're an independent courier and we've got all of our customers that we've spent time and millions of dollars to generate, right? On our dime and at our risk, not you, the driver, we did all of this and we want to give you this opportunity to give this customer the service that you're offering. You, as an independent contractor, independent courier, decide, is that enough money? Is that, you know, Am I willing to take that? Is that worth it for me? Yes or no? That's it. If it's a shitty offer, you just say, no, thanks. You don't get mad at Uber for giving you a shitty offer. It's an offer they didn't have. If you don't like it, go get your own customers. Well, it's your uh, business. Essentially, pay Uber, the, spend the money and get your own customers. I bet you don't. Essentially, Uber and Lyft are a lead generation source. Yeah. Right? And, and the people so, are getting mad. Of, they're yeah. giving you leads, idiot. Don't get mad at them. <laughs> if the take lead, the opportunity. If the lead's no good, don't take it. But there are people, I, I would say that most businesses uh, are in the business of buying leads to find customers. Here, they're just being fed to you. The hardest part of any business is finding customers. That's the hardest part. 
Now you have, you get to start a business essentially for free. And you've got these huge companies spending millions of dollars a year to generate customers for you. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, they're greedy. That pisses me off. They don't pay me. It's your mindset. If you have a W-2 mentality, go get a W-2 job because you're never going to get it. And if you watch this video, you're going to be all pissed off in our comments. I already know it. And I'm sorry the truth hurts, but this channel is not about patting people on the ass. It's okay. You're just a victim. You can't make any money. It's about helping people figure out how to improve their financial situation. That's what we're all about. And buying into your own victimhood is not going to help you improve your financial situation. We're not buying into that. Go do something else. Add some more apps to it. Don't sit there and bitch. If this company is not giving you leads that are profitable profitable enough in your area, go find a company that is or go do something else. That's it. Don't bitch at the company for providing you an opportunity that didn't exist before they existed. Well, and uh, we talked earlier about you know the expenses of just sitting there waiting for an offer to come. And it brings us to our second topic, which is uh, prices are going down, it seems, for every sort of offer. One of my favorite YouTube channels has to be uh, Meaty Mama. Uh, you can Meaty look, Mama. look her up. She, she's great. She's funny. But, uh, you know, she's complaining. Like, these aren't like the old times. Uh, I'm not yeah, getting not. I'm not getting good offers. And so if you're making less per offer, and it's taking you approximately the same amount of time that it was before. That means that your cost per mile is going up. And Damon, you've had a a rude re-education on this because your Tesla is uh, not able to be used right now for delivery. So you've been driving your gas car and it's taking, you're realizing how much gas per hour you can burn doing crappy orders. Dude, my Tesla bricked, bro. Mm -hmm. Just bricked. It is dead. The 12 volt battery died. Not the big battery, not the $15,000 battery, but just the $150 $50, 12 volt regular lead acid battery. Yeah. Too bad you had no Here's advance thing, notice. I, I didn't. It, it only told me for like three weeks before <laughs> that car could shut down at any moment. I was like, well, you know my personality. Steve. Well, like, yeah. Nah, you got this. You Plus got you this. had He's me, like, you had me nagging you. Yeah. But the, you always just nag. You're yeah. a nag, dude. You're like giving me facts and stuff. I don't need yeah. that stuff. It's like, I'm, I'm busy. I don't got time to get it in. Anyway, I woke up the other day just dead like there's nothing you could do can't get the door open get the screen on whatever anyway tesla sending out a mobile guy on wednesday they're going to replace the battery Mm -hmm. um and i should be fine but this week my family's been out in california my son's got a baseball tournament my wife took the truck and all the kids um so i've just been here with lizzie uh our little maltese uh, working and you know still doing some deliveries here and there but i'm taking her cadillac that's the only operable car i have now that she's Mm -hmm. gone with the truck cadillac gets you know about 20 miles a gallon and I mean, it's just, it's just sedan. It's not like a, an escalator or anything like that, but yeah, uh, you know, this is not something I've really had to think about in the last two years. I mean, I think about it, but the reality is, you know, the Tesla's got a full charge every morning, plug yep. it in. We've got solar on the house. I mean, the way our electric bill works out here, I've figured out it costs about $3 yeah. to fill Char- up the fully, Tesla, full charge on the yeah. Tesla, like, like three bucks. Right. right. So I'm driving 200, 250 miles on $3 most of the time. So when, when you're in that, you don't really think too much about the cost of driving five miles for this order, right. driving this. I mean, you got tires and stuff like that, but it's not now in the Cadillac, you know, I just had to, you know, I started driving it, put 60 bucks in it, filled it up, whatever. But now I'm looking at it. And in my head, when I see like, there was a DoorDash I did last night, it was not too bad. It was like, I don't know, 14 bucks, but it was going like eight miles. Right. And normally I was like, ah, not a big deal. But now I'm going like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, that's about time, a gallon. At the time, my car was showing average. I just filled it up and it was yeah. showing 16 miles a gallon because it's 115 degrees, 110 degrees out here in Phoenix. Yeah. So guess what I'm doing when I'm at my stop? Oh, yeah. You're I'm leaving you're the car running. Yeah. I'm leaving the car running. The other day, So I'm in uh, uh, the restaurant yesterday. There's one. It's like, oh, we're waiting on the sides. And normally I'm like, yeah, okay. But then I'm like, my car's idling in the parking <laughs> lot. Now the waiting time is is driving me even more crazy. And it took him like 10 minutes. Yeah. Meantime, I got my car out there idling. You know, it's locked, but I can see it. It's just idling. I'm just like, I can feel the gas just getting sucked out. So that's why it's only at the time averaging 16 miles a gallon, you know, because it's been doing a lot of idling, driving around town, things like that. Unlike yeah. the Tesla, which is more efficient driving around town. 
And when you leave it and you leave the air on in dog mode, it's negligible drain on the battery, right. if, if any at all. It's, it's like it doesn't even blip on the radar. So anyway, now I'm in my head, I'm going, okay, 14 bucks. Yeah, fine. Okay, it's going to be, you know, eight miles. But now I'm going to have to come back about five miles to get back home. So, man, I'm going to be driving about, you know, 14, 15 miles. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that's a gallon. A gallon's, you know, 360. I just filled up. Mm -hmm. Now, oh my, now this $14 is like, you know, not even, ten, you know, 10 and change. Right. Like, I don't even factor that in that much in my head when I'm driving the Tesla. And now I'm going... Okay, this and that was a pretty good order. So now I start thinking about what about these guys that I see offers where it's like five bucks to go seven miles. And and I'm like, that's you know, and if, if you go seven miles out and seven miles back, yeah, you're get you're spending three fifty for gas and you're getting five, so you're spending a half an hour of your day for a dollar fifty. Yeah, and so like you, gotta... you, you get to do what two <laughs> two of those runs an hour. Yeah. Right? Well, you could probably do three, maybe, but but then you, but this goes back to the two types of personality. You got one type that takes that order and then bitches to the heavens about how greedy DoorDash is, and mm -hmm. this doesn't make sense, and this is stupid. And then you got the other type that says, "Oh no, that's not profitable for my business. Right. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, just say I'm that. not taking that order because I would I would lose money or I wouldn't make whatever that threshold is that I need to make to make a profit in my business." That lead is not good enough. I'm not going to waste my time and my gas doing that. Right. And keep in mind the opportunity cost. If you go do that, you might miss a better order, right? Or you might not, but that's just the name of the game. But why take a job that you know you're going to lose money on? Yeah. A lot of people just think about revenue and they don't think about profit. And that's the problem. Yeah. And I've seen uh, a bunch of these earned by time offers where drivers will get, you know, a good one or they'll have a high rating and they'll, They'll get one that pays them an extra buck or two, you know, like big deal. Um, but then they get a bunch of shitty offers. So then your opportunity is what? Pause or decline it. And either way, you're not making money. Well, these companies, you know, they're not stupid, these companies, right? They they trick drivers into taking bad orders by their stupid bonus structure that doesn't mean anything. Oh, I'm top dasher or I, now, now Uber just came out with a new one called I don't know what it is. Like yeah, is your that standard the, driver? Twenty five percent threshold or something. Yeah. 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 Like they have standard driver or it's not called advanced. I don't remember. I don't it doesn't matter where you have to meet certain thresholds. Now, granted, Uber's saying the, the acceptance rate has to be twenty five percent. So that, at least that's that's whatever. Um, my acceptance rate on Uber is like eleven percent right now. Yeah. But the problem the thing that most drivers don't understand is they they get so tunnel vision and focus on, oh, I have to be top dasher, I have to be this, I have to be that, because then DoorDash will throw me a few extra bucks. But what you're potentially making yeah. by getting a few extra bucks on some of these top Dasher orders, you're more than losing on all these shitty orders you're having to take to keep your acceptance rate yeah. high enough to qualify. It's just like, hey, go lose 20 bucks and we'll throw $2 at you after. Yeah. And imagine how it much it costs. It doesn't compute. How much it actually costs to achieve that rating. Yeah, it, you're, you're losing money overall. The better thing to do would be don't just focus on being a top dasher. Focus on five different apps that you're not a top dasher or top driver or whatever the hell on any of them and just cherry pick and get the ones that are the best orders, right? And yep. those are all going to come from customer tips. Almost all of these apps, the, the, the base pay that comes with most of these is not even enough to cover your expenses or barely. Certainly not enough to cover your time. Right. Well, but they've figured out that people will still take those orders for some unknown reason. And the reason might be because they're just new to the platform. They don't yeah. know. Yeah. They're just taking orders. It might take them a few months to realize I'm losing money or I now I got to get the brakes done on my car. I don't have the money for that. I can't keep continuing to drive my car to the ground for three, four dollar orders. And then they end up quitting. But guess what? There's 10 people behind them. I mean, it, you know, anybody that tries to get on Walmart Spark anywhere in the country from yes. people I've talked to. a waiting list. Waiting list, waiting list, waiting list, waiting list. So what the hell does Walmart Spark care? You know, you're bitching about illegals taking orders and stuff. They got more drivers than they need, right? They're not going to do anything about it. But but going back to the Tesla real quick, you know, unfortunately, I bought my Tesla during the pandemic. So it was like $65,000 for this Model Y. And it is what it is. It, it's still profitable for me, and I like it. It saves me about eight hundred dollars a month in gas between mm -hmm. me doing these things and driving kids to school and sports and all that stuff. 
and it's a great car and I love it. But now you could get a used Model Y right now for under $30,000. Yeah. So if you're thinking about, you know, getting another car or you're getting into the gig work game or anything that's going to require some, I highly recommend a used Model Y under $30,000 because you will make up for that in the gas that you will save. You know, I mean, you know, I can run the numbers on a Prius, but even on a Prius, definitely any other car where the ga- the money that you will save in gas would probably cover the payment on a used Model Y under $30,000. Well, here's the caveat. It, it, yeah. You got to have a, you got to have a garage or a place you can charge. Right. Home. You can't, you can't park. If you it on have the street to do to superchargers. You, you lose most of that savings. It doesn't make sense. Unfortunately. So if you live in an apartment, you can't have your own super, char- you, you can't have your own level two charger there. It's not going to save you much money. It's going to be more of a hassle than it's worth. But if you have a house, you have a garage, get a Model Y if you're going to do this stuff. Well, okay, let me give you some real-time statistics. So if you wanted to go out and get a Model 3, you could lease one right now for two ninety nine a month for three years. Or you could buy it for $610 a month. Uh, the cash price is thirty eight nine. Hmm? If you're going to do gig work, do not lease the car. Right. Do not lease the car. (laughs) Do not lease the car. Should they lease the car? Ah, (laughs) Dave Ramsey's patting me on the back. Sorry. Oh. Although he's he's not fully patting me on the back because he'd also say, don't finance the car either. Right. (laughs) Finance the car. You'd be all right. If if it's a tool to make money and you're going to use it that way. You can finance the car, Dave Ramsey. Well, and if you wanted to get something that's a little bit more expensive uh, and it has more capacity, a car like you have now, right now, the uh, long the long range rear wheel drive Model Y is one point nine nine percent interest if you finance it. I, I would, if, if all else being equal, the Model Y is going to be a little bit more. But if you're going to do gig work, I. 100% hands down recommend the Model Y, especially if you have a family. It's bigger, it's roomier. Steve, you can attest to this. It's oh, easier yeah. to get in and out of if you're older, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Mo- the Model 3 is a lot lower. I, yep. I, Steve's, Steve's Model 3 was the first one I ever rode in. I have a Model Y, and he picked me up at the airport. Um, I don't know, the first time was a few years ago. He picked me up at the airport in his Model 3. And I, I mean, I'm just like in my 40s. I'm not in the best of shape, but I was like, oh my God, how do you get into this thing? You know, I'm just used to kind of sliding in, but the Model Y has got the hatchback. So if you're going to do any kind of grocery delivery, Instacart, anything like that, it's just so much easier. You got the big you know, bubble back instead of the trunk. The Model 3 is fine, but for just a little bit more money, there's just so many. And Steve can attest to this. Steve, do you have your Model 3 anymore? No, I have two Model Ys. <laughs> two Model Ys. <laughs> and what would you think about Model Y versus the Model 3 for gig work? Oh. Hands down, much better, much much better. Yeah, get the Model Y. What'd you? Say? I was gonna say three fifty. So it would cost you two hundred and twelve gallons of gas if you, because the payment on the Model Y right now at the reduced interest rate is seven hundred and forty three dollars a month, which is the equivalent to about two hundred and twelve gallons of that, gas. That's a new. That's a new Model Y. Though. That's brand new. Yeah, yeah, that's brand new. I'm I'm talking about yeah. You get a used gig one work better, and you know you're trying to with the finances get a used one. Right. You don't. I mean, you you. I mean, obviously, look at the. You know, you're getting two percent interest. So if they're trying to get you for if you're, you know, they're trying to get you for eight, nine, ten percent interest on a used one, you got to factor that into it. But what are the new what Y's going for? The overall price, like forty five. Uh, the cash price right now is forty four nine. Yep. <laughs> Like forty five. <laughs> so if if you if you are buy, doing gig work and you're buying more than two hundred and twelve dollars, uh, two hundred and twelve gallons of gas a month, then you essentially can get a free Tesla. Um, and there you go, you can charge it at home. You don't have to worry about gas, oil changes, brake jobs, all that other stuff. Yeah, and people freak out. Who's gotten two hundred and twelve gallons of gas a month? It goes real fast. I mean, when I was I don't drive anywhere near that anymore because I'm only doing like 10, 15 hours a week. And I drew, I drove a lot more when I was doing Lyft and Uber when we first got started with this experiment. Yeah. And now I've figured out that grocery delivery is uh, more convenient. It, it pays better and the uh, you get a lot more per mile. 
uh, you know, paid more per mile than you do driving Lyft or any of that stuff, which is why it surprises me that so many people just, oh, I'm a Lyft driver or I'm an Uber driver. And that's and, it. Well, it shouldn't surprise me because I, I didn't want to try Instacart for a long time because I didn't think I'd like it. But if right. you haven't tried it and Lyft is not paying you, Uber's not paying you what it used to, try Instacart. Get get on the waiting list for Walmart Spark. I'm telling you, I did one the other day, I uh, yesterday. Uh, I did an Instacart. I made $45. It was a 14-item shop. The delivery was three miles from the store. The store is three miles from my house. I drove six miles in my car. It took me an hour because I'm not the fastest shopper. It was one of those specialty frou-frou stores that mm. half the stuff on the list, I didn't even know what it was, much less where to find it. Because I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is this? You know. And I've only done a shop at that store like two or three times. But you know, if you're used to it, it would have been faster. But even as slow as I was, start to finish took me an hour. Door to door. I mean, left my house and came back mm. one hour. I made $45 in six miles. Yeah. Show me how you're going to do that on Lyft. Show me how you're going to do that on Uber. Because now your time is spent, like you walk around the store. It's not your car driving. So there's a lot less expense involved. And, you know, I guess you could say, well, I might need a knee replacement sooner when I get to 65 because I'm walking more. I don't know. But hey, I'm, I'm getting... I'm getting in better shape than I am sitting in the car driving Uber. I'll tell you that. But that's if, true. If you're if if you're an Uber Lyft driver and you've just never done grocery, just try it and, and try it for a few months. Don't try it like my wife did the first time. Oh, this and go, sucks. This sucks. <laughs> and we spent three hours. And I said the same thing, but I persevered, right? But we didn't know what we were doing. And I and it started from the worst mistake we made was I took a bad order. Yeah. Because I didn't know. I didn't know it was. I, I saw, oh my gosh, $55. This is awesome, right? Because I'm, I'm used to getting lift. Here's a $10 ride. Here's a $12. So I saw, but what I saw, but I didn't realize because I had no experience was the 80 or 90 items, whatever it was. It's going to take forever. It's not going to be a good deal for somebody that has never done it before. And it took my wife and I two and a half hours you know, just there to do the were, shop. There were exp- experienced people out in the parking lot. And that pops up and they were going, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they did what I do now. Go, somebody took that shit? <laughs> <laughs> and it was some brand new driver like I was, right? So <laughs> I I understand why drivers take bad orders. Now, if you're very experienced and you're still taking it and then complaining, yeah. but there are some drivers that are good. They're super fast. I, I'm i not a fast shopper. There are people that can shop things. They go, oh, 30 seconds an item. And I'm like. Dude, I'm two minutes an item. So, but I know my limitations. So I'm not going to take something. So maybe if you're 45 seconds an item and you've done a thousand shops in that store, you might see an order that you can be prof, you can make profitable for you and mm-hmm. you can take that. And that's great. And I look at that same order and go, that's not profitable for me, but it doesn't mean you're not better at it than I am. Right. right? So, but right. you have to know your skills and what you can do, figure out what your profit level needs to be. Come up with a formula to quickly figure that out and then take jobs based on your winning formula. Don't just take jobs because there's a big $50 in front of it or something like that. So to wrap things up, uh, a couple of things I'd like to say. Number one, hey, if you haven't uh, done it yet and you've been listening to us yammer on, uh, like the video. It really helps us on YouTube and uh it lets us get introduced to other people. If you have something... Yammer on. That, I've yeah. been reading a script the whole time. <laughs> this is all scripted. Uh, if you if you uh, have a difference of opinion, you have feedback, you have some information well, you want to share, put it in the comments. We do read every be comment. Some, um, be some difference of opinion. And as she <laughs> pointed out, I've got 10 days worth of comments I need to get to. I will be doing that when we're wrapping. All right. And, and so... Uh, the fake account thing, let's see if I can summarize this really quickly. It's a distraction. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's If there were no fake accounts, it would be something else that would be limiting income opportunities and people would be bitching about it. Um, if you want to learn no- more about how fake accounts are created and how easy it has been in the past, then go to the Penny Stupid channel on YouTube and watch the – it's it's in the, the list of videos – um, look for the video on how to create fake rideshare accounts. It's it's not super secret or anything. Yeah, and, you could do it too and go to jail. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and but, uh, I mean, she made like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. I mean, well, she and made the almost thing, a million bucks over like a two year period. Yeah, and the the funny thing is that uh, it, it wasn't like rocket science because she was getting 
legit IDs from people who were registered on the platform and essentially just renting out their account, making money. She went to jail for what, 18 months? It wasn't that long, but I think it's funny because when she went to jail, she was dissed by uh, other criminals in jail because she went through all this legit. trouble and yeah, it created fake accounts and everything. And she didn't engage in identity th- theft and rip people off financially. She did this because she wanted to work and make money. And they yeah. thought that she was a, you know, an idiot. <laughs> she, too, too goody, two shoes to be a, a proper criminal. Right. Sorry. Kind of <laughs> like, like she had standards. Like there was, there was a line she wouldn't cross. Yeah. But you know, the, the funny thing about it, I don't know if it's funny. I don't know if not funny. haha, but. I'm sure there are people that would watch this video and say, wait a minute, let me get this straight. So she did these fake accounts for like two years, made three quarters of a million dollars, and then only went to jail for 18 months. And they're doing the math going, you make the money, you set it aside in a Vanguard investment account. You you, you get your three three hots in a cot for 18 right. months and you come back to, you got a million and a half dollars or whatever. <laughs> Hey, (laughs) and you don't have rent for those 18 months. You just, you know, just let, let the money accumulate. I'm not saying that's a good strategy. No, I'm just saying there gotta be some people going, Hmm, "Hmm, that's, you know, that's a trade-off. You know, how many people would say, Hey, I need you to spend 18 months in jail and I'll give you three quarters of a million dollars. Okay. There'll be a lot of people that'd be like, cool. Yeah. All right, (laughs) Damon, on on that note, you do it on that note. See ya. Peace.